now the chancellor of UMass Lowell. And, you know, going back to the last time we did congressional redistricting here 10 years ago, you had a major scare last time, right? I remember then Speaker Finneran coming out with a map that showed the fifth uh, oh, that's vanishing. Oh, right. uh, Now I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Like you <laughs> forgot. Uh, first, do you believe the fifth is imperiled this time around? I don't think the fifth is. Obviously, when you're losing a seat, uh, that means there will be a district that won't exist uh, anymore. But I think the fifth district is in reasonably good shape. Um, it's, uh, you know, Nikki Songus is representing us. She's the only woman member of the delegation. I would think there'd be uh, many people that would want to make sure that we keep the only woman in the del delegation uh, to keep the Merrimack Valley intact. Uh, my sense is that it's probably in pretty good shape. Now, what is the bottom line? Is it a question of who the Beacon Hill power brokers like the least in terms of who's on the banana peel? Well, I think they're going to look at a number of things. Uh, seniority, uh, which member of Congress is, is, would be more effective, for example. They'll look at geography, and, and it certainly is a political process, too. But I think, John, it's early in the process. We don't know whether one of the members of Congress could run for higher office and, and not seek re-election, or even that a member of Congress may decide not to run for re-election may decide to retire so we really don't know yet what the makeup uh, is going to be in terms of the, of the delegation there have been times when they've been redistricting for example Brian Donnelly decided not to uh, run mm -hmm. during the course of a redistricting process so I think it's early yet but I think the legislature will look at a lot of different scenarios they'll look at population trends and uh, they'll look at uh, those areas as a state that want to keep their areas intact you mentioned the Merrimack Valley but uh, that's true in western Massachusetts it's true in South Eastern Mass, where they want to, you know, they want to have clout in a district. So I think all of that will play out over the next year. Getting back to UMass Lowell, you have emphasized uh, the university's focus on science and technology, and as an incubator for job creating, research and development. Uh, bi biotech uh, and other related fields have taken a beating along with everything else in the recession. Is that still a viable vision for the future of UMass Lowell and the state economy? Absolutely. Uh, the University of Massachusetts uh, does a half a billion dollars in research. We're third actually to Harvard and MIT in the state. That research is critically important, particularly that research that focuses uh, on, on, on technologies that have a high likelihood of commercialization. So I think the future of Massachusetts uh, goes directly through the University of Massachusetts, all of the campuses, but particularly Lowell. Uh, U.S. Senate race, 2012, in or out? Uh, I love what I'm doing, out. Uh, future political office, yes or no? Um, not in the near distant future. I mean, uh, you know, you never know five, ten years down the road, but I, I, I honestly, we have a lot of things going on at UMass Lowell that I'm excited about, so I won't be running anytime soon. And presidency of Suffolk, yes or no? Uh, no, I like what I'm doing at UMass Lowell. <laughs> <laughs> if I miss something? I, I, you know what, I, I, it's amazing, but... Uh, yeah. The Red Sox need a middle reliever. How's your fastball? Well, I, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind being a quarterback's coach for the Patriots either. I bet you wouldn't. I know you're a football <laughs> junkie. Good to see Thanks you, Chancellor. Thanks very much. Good to see Thanks. you. Thanks, Marty me and Chancellor of UMass Lowell.